Hey there, scientists. Today, we are talking landforms and weather patterns. Your goal today is that you will be able to describe how winds and the clouds in the atmosphere interact with landforms to determine patterns of weather. I want you to think back to what we talked about with climate, and I want you to remember that cool breezes blow toward the shore on hot summer days. In winter, warm ocean water moderates the climate along coastlines. So, I want you to think about landforms found in Earth's geosphere. What landforms do you think affect the climate? Let's jump into our diagram that we have right here in front of us. So, we see a landform right in front of us. We see a mountain. And the rain shadow region forms on the side of the mountain farthest from the ocean. So we're going to be talking about rain shadows today and how the geosphere and the atmosphere are interacting. So we have water evaporating from the ocean. Then we have the moist air rises and cools. The clouds are going to form. Rain and snow fall on the mountain and then the air moving downward becomes drier and warmer. And we'll explain this in greater detail as we move through our lesson. And then this part of our mountain is called a rain shadow. So do you think that landforms such as mountains can affect the weather and climate? Well, yeah, we have evidence of that in front of us already. You might be thinking that mountains affect the movement of air, and so if the air is affected, it's going to affect the weather and climate, and you're correct. So as we jump in to our reading here, we are going to read so we can describe how winds and clouds in the atmosphere interact with landforms to determine patterns of weather. Weather changes the shape of the land. At the same time, landforms interact with winds and clouds to determine the patterns of weather in a region. Mountain ranges affect the amount of rain that falls in an area. Winds blowing off the ocean bring moist air to the land. If there is a mountain range in the path of the wind, the air is pushed upward. As the air moves up, it cools. This cooling causes Vapor, water vapor in the air to condense. Clouds form. Rain and snow from the clouds fall on the side of the mountain closest to the ocean. The air loses much of its moisture. As the air moves down the other side of the mountain range, it gets warmer. Clouds disappear. The area on the dry side of the mountain range is said to be in a rain shadow. Little rain falls in these areas. Can you describe the air that moves onto land from the ocean? Well, the air that moves onto the land from the ocean is going to be moist. There's a lot of moisture, a lot of humidity in that air that moves from the ocean onto the land. And it's going to be humid, it may be warmer or cooler than the land, depending on the season. So, what happens as air blowing off the ocean encounters a mountain? Well, the air is going to come off the mountain, the moisture is going to rise and cool, and then the clouds are going to form. The, that air that's coming off the ocean is forced upward. Why does precipitation fall on the side of the mountain closest to the ocean? Well, the water that has evaporated from the ocean condenses as the air is pushed upward by the mountain. The condensing air forms clouds from which precipitation falls. So as this, as this warm air, this warm moist air comes off of the ocean and it gets higher into the atmosphere and starts to cool, it's going to condense and get heavier and fall as rain and as snow. So what type of an environment would you expect to find on the side of a mountain that faces an ocean? On this side of the mountain that faces the ocean, 
what would we expect to find? There's probably going to have a lot of vegetation, a lot of plant life, um, because the air is moist and there is precipitation. So we're going to see perfect conditions for plants to grow on this side of a mountain, the side of the mountain closest to the ocean. So what type of environment would you expect to find on the side of the mountain that faces away from the ocean? Well, once that air comes over, it has dropped all of its moisture and now it's going to become much drier and move down the mountain where the air moving downward becomes warmer and drier. So if we have warm, dry air, what kind of environment are we going to find? The environment most likely would be a dry desert or an era, area that is arid because the air has lost its moisture and warms as it moves down the mountain. And this diagram is a rain shadow. The rain shadow region forms on the side of the mountain farthest from the ocean. So now we can identify this area as the rain shadow. Now we can take this a step further and we can look at this satellite image right here in front of us. So this satellite image shows a rain shadow on Mauna Lao, a volcano on the island of Hawaii. Lush greenery grows where warm, moist air rises, clouds form, and rain falls onto the coastal side of the volcano. So here we can see where the rain shadow region is. All of this area down in here is dry and arid, and this area up here is looks lush and green. We can even see where there's clouds that are hitting the mountain and they're just staying there. They're not coming over to this side of the mountain. So where is the rain shadow? The rain shadow is right here in this dry area. So the brownish side of the volcano is in the rain shadow. It shows little greenery, so the air must be dry and warm. From which direction do we think the wind generally blows here? And how would we know? Up here, there's a compass rose. It says north is this way, south is this way, west is over here, and east is over here. So if all of our lush greenery area is here, and we know that the wind has to blow across to blow that warm, moist air onto the land where it's going to condense, and then when it comes onto this side, it's not going to have any moisture left and create that rain shadow, which direction is it coming from? The wind generally blows from the east to the west. And you can use that compass and you can use your inferencing skills here to be able to read this map and know it's going to come from the east to the west. And then our rain shadow is going to form on the back side of this. As you move forward, scientists, you are going to be asked to identify parts of the rain shadow cycle you are going to be asked to explain the difference between, to describe the difference between the amount of rain that falls on the ocean side of a mountain range and the amount of rain that falls in a mountain range as rain shadow. You are going to be asked to apply what you know in this question. Death Valley in California and Nevada is one of the driest places in North America. Death Valley is located east of the Sierra Nevada. Why is Death Valley so dry? So you're going to have to think about what do you know about dry and arid areas, like what makes them the way they are, especially if it is on the east side of the Sierra Nevada mountain range on the west coast of the United States. So you're really going to have to think about everything that you know and channel some of your some of your social studies information that you learned back in fourth grade. Because at the end today, your goal is that you can describe how winds and clouds in the atmosphere interact with landforms like mountains to determine patterns of weather. Good luck, scientists. Mm -hmm.